Hi everybody, this is Mark from Mark's Mandalas and this video is going to show you how to make Dot Mandala resin coasters. Um, I did experiment with a different mold, but then I found this type, which I am trying out and I think they're going to work really well. So I'm going to go ahead and get started so I can keep this thing uh, as concise and to the point as possible. First thing you want to do is make sure you have a, a flat level surface and I have a level right here that I checked this spot already and I have an, a nice flat surface to pour the resin because uh, this resin will go to the lowest point and if it's not level you're going to have an uneven pour. Um, I've already prepared my, my black tinted resin and it's had a chance to sit and off gas for a bit and now I am going to go ahead and just uh, pour this in the mold. Now if you want to try to measure how much uh, I do have a scale and I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on to get an idea these for the the base pour I found about 75 grams this should be about 186 so I'm gonna try to get this down to approximately uh, 110 more or less for the first one and then I'm gonna try to do it uh, for another down this is down to uh, 35 grams for the second pour because I'm going to use part of this resin to do some rock smoothing as well. So let me go ahead and just start pouring this in. I'm just going to kind of pour it around. It's self-leveling so this should... Okay, and I have a paper towel right here. I'm going to wipe the edge of the cup so I don't make any drips. 139. Okay, I need to pour a little more in here. Okay, I'm going a little slow. My, I haven't done this very much yet, so you're going to have to please forgive me with my guessing on on resin weight. That's why I have the scale to rely on. Okay, I'm going to pour a little bit more in there. I think that's going to be pretty close. Yep, there we go. That's going to be close enough. So now I'm going to go ahead and pour another, let's see, what am I at now? I'm at 117 and I want about 75, so um, down to about 40. Yeah, 40, 41, 42, something like that. I think it's better to have just a little bit too much of this in here as long as it's not going over the top than to not have enough. So let's see how I did with my first guess. Okay, I need about 24 more grams. And I'm just guessing I've actually done one pour already with this. Um, so that seemed like that about 75 grams per coaster mold seemed to work pretty good. So just about another 10, 11 grams or so. And a couple more. Okay, that's good right there. I'm gonna go ahead and cover these up so that nothing falls on them. The good part is this is the bottom of the coaster. And actually, I don't know what I'm thinking about trying to um, cover them up and call this step one good enough because there will be some off-gassing. I have let this resin off-gas for a while, um, but more air bubbles will uh, rise to the surface, more than likely. I see one right now. Um, a lot of them will pop, but there are others that won't. Now. Uh, Traditionally, I think a lot of people will use a torch uh, to get rid of the air bubbles, and you can do that, but I'm also going to show you another way that you can get rid of the air bubbles um, on your resin pour, and that is actually using uh, a little spray bottle of acetone. And um, 
you want to be careful with this. You want to be in a, in a well-ventilated area and you want to take proper precautions. Read, read the container of acetone for sure. Um, if, if you've ever used fingernail polish remover, that is a main component in nail polish remover is acetone. Um, it evaporates quickly though and you just want to you know, treat it with respect. And so um, I think I've done a pretty good job of letting this stuff off gas because I'm still only seeing that one little air bubble uh, that's that's right here that I don't know if you can see it because of the lighting. Let me see if I can move this carefully and get that little air bubble there. I think you might be able to see it right there now, hopefully. Um, but I'm going to let this sit for about five minutes, let it off gas, and then I'm going to go ahead and spray mist uh, the top with a little bit of acetone if I see any bubbles that haven't popped yet. So I'll be right back in five minutes, my time, about two seconds your time. Okay, well I've given this several minutes to go ahead and off gas, and I still see that one air bubble is, is sitting right there, but I haven't seen much more show up here. Um, for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and mist this with, uh, with some acetone and you'll notice that bubble will disappear. The bubbles, air bubbles do hide better in the, the black tinted resin and I'm sure in the other uh, tinted resins as well. Um, the clear resins were, will uh, tend to show off the air bubbles more so. But anyways, let me go ahead and give this a quick mist. Keep an eye on that right there and any other ones that you see. And here we go. Okay, well, um, that one popped right away as you can see. And I'm going to go ahead and let these cure for 24 hours. And I'm going to go ahead and remove them so you can see what they look like. And then from there, I'm going to show you how I mark the center and start painting on these. Okay, it's been about 24 hours, a little bit longer actually. And these coasters are nice and hard. I would not say that they were 100% they cured, but they are cured definitely enough to be able to remove from the mold. So let's go ahead and do that now. And this is the bottom of the mold. Let's go ahead and take this hexagonal shaped one out first. And you can see what the top looks like. I'm also going to mark the center of these um, before I get ready to start painting on them. So there we go. Look at that nice and smooth. I don't see any imperfections on there. And you can see there's a, a, a ridge along the outer area. So when I'm done doing the artwork, um, I'll be able to pour clear resin right into this area here and it won't spill over the edge. Nice and easy. You don't have to leave. In my other coasters, I had to leave this in the mold the entire time and it was kind of difficult. Not terrible, but... Um, Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and take the, the mold out of the way and let's take the square one out. Let's see how this one turned out. I think that looks wonderful. And now I have a Cricut and I measured with a pair of calipers inside the spaces here and cut out shapes that would fit inside them with the center uh, part uh, punched out as well that I had the Cricut do. And if you have a Cricut, I'll go ahead and, and give you the dimensions so you can put that into your Cricut design space. I'm also going to try to do one that has um, lines and put it on my website so that you can and print it out and, and cut it out. So let's see. But for right now, I put those in there and I'm going to go ahead and I just, I'm going to take some Craft Smart white paint and I'm just going to just dip that in that little hole right there and mark right there. I don't need a very big dot, just something for center. I'm a lefty, but for the camera, I'm going to go right-handed. And right there. And now I'm going to go ahead and 
turn this upside down. And now you can see I have a center dot. So I'll be able to find the center really quickly and easily. And get that piece of paper out. And there's a center dot on that one as well. So now that those are ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and begin painting some uh, some patterns on there. I'm going to start off probably with the square one and uh, stand by and I'll start dotting here in just a moment. Now this art portion of this tutorial I have sped up dramatically and if you would like to watch this in more of a tutorial form I have the link above on the screen right now. You can click on that and check that out. And once I am done with this I'm going to be actually uh, pouring the resin on um, when I get to the resin portion, I will. I have already stirred the resin. I combined 30 grams of resin with 15 grams of hardener and stirred it thoroughly. I have a video that shows how I mix my resin. The link to that is on the screen right now. And it's self-leveling resin, so even though I pour it around the coaster, um, you don't really have to. Uh, just because it is self-leveling and it will even itself out. You want to make sure it's on a flat surface though. That's, that's very important. And um, once this is at a chance to uh, sit for about five minutes, I'll spray the top with a little bit of acetone to get rid of any remaining air bubbles on there and I'll cover it up for about 24 hours or so. I won't use it for about three days. And here is the, the finished product. Uh, you can see the reflection on there. The artwork is nicely protected. Um, if you've liked this video, I hope you give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. This is Mark from Mark's Mandalas. Until next time, rock on.